am Sandy Allnock, Bible Journaler here on YouTube. And today I'm going to do this page in my Bible with these cute little figures that were inspired by a nativity set that I got from Kenya. And I purchased them from one of those import shops and I thought they were so cute. And they had these kings that I thought would be easy to draw. And I'm using some elements from these to create three cute little figures to put in my Bible. The verse that I chose was from Matthew 2. After they, the Magi, had heard the king, King Herod, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And I've sketched them out. You can download this sketch if you want. I've put two balls in two of their hands, like and and in the uh, the actual ones, and I've given them also those little weird shaped heads. <laughs> you can give them round heads if you want to. I'm going to also adjust a little bit as I transfer this drawing with a pencil into my Bible and make them maybe their bodies a little fatter. And I switched the gifts around so the bag was in the front. You can do all different kinds of fun things with these and customize them to make them work for you. And I just put little turbans on each one of them and I'll draw the star in the sky and then leave the lettering to do after I get all the coloring done with my ink tense pencils. These are a watercolor type pencil. They are actually ink rather than watercolor, so they are a little brighter in color, and they aren't as permanent as they are on other papers because it's on Bible paper, so they do move a good bit with water, but they work really well and they have nice, bright, intense colors. One of the reasons that I chose to do an epiphany page because I don't usually do epiphany pages in my Bible, was because of something I learned about the three magi. You know, I know the story that they went to see Herod, the king who wanted to kill the baby, and he pretended he wanted to go and worship the baby and said, when you find him, come tell me where he's at. And they kind of said, no, they just kept going after they found the baby. But the thing that struck me about this story is that they went... 900 miles on camels to go find Jesus. That's how bad they wanted to find him. I'm not sure if you have an, an accurate depiction in your mind of what 900 miles on a camel would be like, but that was not an easy journey. That was very difficult, very painful. I'm sure there was, I don't know, some issues going on at the very least. And that really impressed me to think about these men and what they did, what they went through because they wanted to find this baby. And they knew the prophecy in Daniel that said how the baby was going to appear, where he was going to be. And they had worked out the math and they knew. And then they saw the star and they, they just went. They didn't question it. Well, I suppose they could have had arguments among themselves, a little backseat driving, but 900 miles on a camel. I don't know if I'd have it in me. Even if I knew Jesus was there, would I do that? I don't know. Boy, I hope I would. I really, really hope I would. I just hope Jesus never asked me to go 900 miles on a camel. Because, yeah, that's, that's some pretty heavy dedication. And I am praying for that dedication for myself for this coming year that I would be so anxious to seek Christ that I would want him in my life so much that I would, I would suffer that much <laughs> because I think that would be, that would be huge to do that kind of a thing in order to find Jesus. So back to the artwork, I have ironed it. So I flattened it out after the first layer of color was watercolored with a brush. And that was a number eight silver brush. L links to the supplies for all these videos are always in the doobly-doo. I have my favorite supplies listed, as well as what was specifically used in this video. And now I'm adding a second layer of color to intensify and brighten it up. The sky didn't watercolor out as smoothly as I wanted it to. So I'm gonna use a different method for spreading the color out. I don't know if it was because of the way that I colored my lines, whether I didn't use enough water or whatever, but I'm going to fix it. And it's, that's one of the cool things about watercolor pencil is that you can sort of fix it after you, you make some errors along the way. 
and I'm using two blues so that I get that darker blue around the top part of the sky. And then I'm going to use a baby wipe by just tapping on the surface because it's going to give it an interesting texture. That also is allowing me to color over the star. I'm going to put the star back in with a white pen, but I'll draw it smaller so it almost is going to have a little light blue halo around it as well. After getting the sky the way I wanted it, I ironed it by putting some paper over it with a hot iron for just a few seconds to get it kind of flat. But then it was time to put the lettering on, and I couldn't see the lettering through the dark color that I put in there. You can transfer the lettering on a couple different ways, but I decided it was just going to be handwritten, and that was just going to be how it was. I put the paper next to me so I'd have an idea of how large I was going to make the letters, and it gave me at least a little bit of a guideline. And then I took my white pen and my black pen and started adding detail. And I added some detail onto each one of the little gifts they're carrying and the outfits of the king in front. And then with a black micron, I'm going to add detail around the edges of everything and do my outlining. One of the reasons I like to do the outlining afterward is because if I change shapes on something while I'm doing the coloring portion, I can go around those shapes and clean them up a little bit using the black pen. It's a little easier to do that than it is to try to stay in the lines when you're doing your coloring. Because sometimes when I'm coloring, I'm going to change something anyway. So this allows me to just go around the outside edges, clean it all up, put a finishing touch on it. And here I'm just adding outlines around the outside of each of those triangles and then adding arms. So I waited until the end to add arms, just made little curved lines coming out from them. It's kind of like glorified stick figures here. You don't have to be an amazing artist to be able to draw something really fun in your Bible that's going to really be meaningful. It's not just about making fun art, but it's making something that's going to remind you to continue to seek him. And I'm going to put a note in the empty section down below about the 90 miles on a camel that they went so that I don't forget that. That was an interesting fact that I want to recall every time Christmas time comes around and I think about those kings, those magi, what did they go through and what is God asking me to go through and am I willing to do it? God bless you. I'll see you next time.